Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Mercedes-Benz GLA 45 AMG. Though Mercedes calls this an SUV, the EPA classifies it as a mid-size wagon. Four doors, five seats. The GLA 45 comes standard with all-wheel drive. Up front, as part of the AMG Aero package, you have a large front splitter as well as dive planes. You also have proximity sensors all around as well as adaptive cruise control. In addition to the front splitter and dive planes, you also have this large rear wing as part of the aerodynamic package. The GLA 45 starts at just over 48,000. As tested here with all the packages included, we're looking at 66,975. Checking out the rear hatch, you do have keyless entry. Decent sized space back here and you also do have 60-40 split folding rear seats and there's also an access panel in case you want to put some maybe skis or something through there. Now checking out underneath, there is not a spare included, you're just going to get a fix a flat kit and there you can see part of the audio system which they've packaged underneath here. Okay, let's have a look under the hood. Now packaging does seem fairly tight in here and you do have this large plastic engine cover but it can be easily removed and stamped on top of it you can see this was hand built by Tobias Veller. So thank you Tobias, I've enjoyed driving this. Now there's some cool things going on in here but first let's check for serviceability. So we've got our engine oil fill and engine oil dipstick. On top of the engine we have our coolant reservoir where we can add coolant and we also have another coolant reservoir over here which I believe is for the air to water intercooler. Now you've got your battery here and you can access this pretty simply. You just pull this cover back and then up and then you can get in there. You also have a positive battery terminal right here which you can use so that's pretty cool they put a little access point in. And here you have your windshield washer fluid as well as your access to your fuse box which does have quick clips to open that up. And then you've got your air filter here which will require tools to get access to. Finally in the back we do have our brake fluid reservoir where you can add your brake fluid right there. This is a turbocharged inline four cylinder, two liters with direct injection, aluminum block and heads, dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder with variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust. It produces 355 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 332 pound feet of torque at just 2250 RPM thanks to a twin scroll turbocharger. This engine is producing 178 horsepower per liter, which is pretty astounding from a production engine, especially one at this cost. Okay, so let's check out the path that the air takes. So we've got our air coming in here. It's going through this massive uh, hose right here where it's entering the inlet of the turbocharger. And then look how short of a distance that air is traveling between the turbocharger and the intercooler, literally from here to here. So that's great for reducing turbo lag where you don't have this piping running down to the front of the car and then all the way back where you're gonna have a tremendous amount of turbo lag. This is really well designed here. So we've got an air to water intercooler. So that air goes through this air to water intercooler passes back, goes through the throttle body, and then into the cylinders. So pretty cool packaging. If you follow this inlet here for the air to water intercooler, you can follow that coolant hose back. And then you can see that the radiator for this intercooler is located in the front passenger side. And so you have a separate radiator there to the left of the front grill where you have the radiator for the engine. So the exhaust from all four cylinders collects down into a single pipe where it heads to the rear, a massive almost three inches in diameter exhaust, and then passes out through one of two tailpipes. This is the AMG Performance exhaust. Engine power is sent to a seven speed dual clutch transmission where it's distributed between all four wheels. Primarily the car will run front wheel drive unless there's slip and then it can send up to 50% of the torque to the rear wheels. Okay, let's have a look at the interior. You do have keyless entry. This does have the optional AMG Recaro leather performance seats, electronically adjustable with three memory settings. That goes for the passenger as well. Okay, so sitting in the interior, plenty of legroom in here. And one of the things that's nice is this steering column is actually really high. So even if you have your foot up a bit, you can still have plenty of room for your knee where you're not gonna bang against anything. Now these seats are really nice actually, these Recaro performance seats. And they do have actually quite a bit of bolstering uh, for both your legs and for uh, the sides of your torso. And they're actually electronically adjustable. So that's pretty nice. So if you are wider or narrower, you can adjust that so it kind of holds 
holds you in real snug. And then of course you do have the electronic adjustment here on the door itself, which is kind of nice because you can actually see what you're adjusting versus kind of just feeling down here and guessing what you're doing. I guess the only downside of this is you got to have wiring that runs down to the seat and everything. Uh, but aside from that, you know, it's actually pretty logical to have it right here. It's really easy to use and see and then set your memory settings right there as well. Now the steering wheel, this is the AMG Performance steering wheel. So it's got kind of some suede and some leather going on. You also have controls on it as well. And you do have paddle shifters, which move with the steering wheel. Now, as far as the controls here, you've got your Bluetooth audio controls, things like that here, and your voice controls. And then here you can select through your menu up front in the display. So you can choose between your audio, uh, telephone connection, driver assist, uh, some settings. And then this one, I actually really like the AMG one where it's got your oil temperature, your coolant temperature, your transmission temperature. It shows you what gear you're in as well as what speed you're going. And you can also have a little lap timer in there. And then you can look at your transmission settings and your traction control settings. So that one's pretty cool. And then you also have in this trip one, you can set it so it displays your range, uh, you know, some information like how far you've gone, the fuel economy you've gotten, uh, trip information, things like that. And then also a speedometer. Now, the one thing about the steering wheel that I'm not fond of is that this has adaptive cruise control, which I really do like adaptive cruise control. I think it's a great technology, but the settings to adjust it are hidden behind the steering wheel, so you can't really see it when you're driving. Uh, when you're looking here, you can't see the functionality of the cruise control, so you just kind of have to guess in there. And so for the first few times you're using it, I mean, you're not going to know exactly what to do, and it's hard to find it um, as far as where it is. So that's just one complaint. It would be nice if those cruise control controls were actually a bit more visible. Now moving on to this display here, which kind of looks like a tablet just kind of resting in midair. Uh, and it's not a touch screen actually. You have this down here, which you use to control it. Um, and you've got all the normal things, you know, navigation, audio, you can change, you know, the settings as far as the bass and treble, things like that. Uh, go into the video. Um, you've got some web apps that you can use in there. And so the general functionality of most systems, um, I don't find this to be too cumbersome to use. I don't, I don't find it all that annoying. It seems to work fairly well. It just does look like it's a touch screen and it's actually not. So it's kind of uh, funny if I guess you try and, you know, use the settings up there and you can't. Now here we have all these controls here, and this is somewhat cumbersome. You've got this whole uh, keypad for dialing numbers. And, you know, I would say that these are dumb, except for the fact that most Bluetooth systems don't recognize what numbers you're saying. So using this to call rather than voice dialing might actually be easier just because the Bluetooth system won't get what you're saying. And then you can, you know, switch between uh, the navigation, the telephone, the radio, and change the display up there as well. Then down here you have your climate controls. So you've got automatic and you've got, you know, your different zones. Um, and then you can change your climate controls. Pretty straightforward system there. Uh, you know, the one thing that I always kind of comment on is that when you do have these systems where you have to select between the mode rather than just set it on, uh, you know, feet, feet and head, uh, defrost, things like that, it's kind of just an annoying extra button that you have to push. But this one at least lets you go scroll back rather than just up or just down uh, like some systems do. Here you have your little AMG uh, sport shifting system here, so you can put it in park, and then when you turn it on, you can put it in neutral, reverse, or drive, and then you can change these modes here between basically the comfort mode, uh, the sport mode, and then the manual mode. So when you put it in the comfort mode and you also have eco on, uh, that will allow for the start-stop technology, so the engine will shut off when you stop moving, and then when you put it in sport mode, it'll keep it up in the higher revs, it'll rev a little bit higher, uh, keep the transmission in, in lower gearing, essentially, and then manually you can select everything yourself. So that's a nice one to use, especially when you've got a good transmission like a dual clutch transmission. One of the other things I didn't mention about the climate system, uh, these knobs are pretty cool. Basically, uh, these little air vents, you can turn them to the right to close off the airflow. So that's pretty cool touch. You know, you don't have that kind of tacky scroll on the side. Uh, so it gives it a really clean look. And I, I do like that. And there are actually quite a bit of, you know, maneuverability in these where you can blow the air in pretty much any direction you want. Now, as far as storage, you do have a little bit here in the door, and then you've got these two cup holders right here. These are not American-sized cup holders. These are very German-sized cup holders, so they're pretty small. You can't fit your uh, big gulp in there, but, you know, something you'll have to live with if you're an American and uh, you want a larger cup holder. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't the car for you. You do also have in here an ashtray, which looks like it has a cigarette holder uh, and, you know, a lighter. It's like, what year is this? Do people actually still smoke? I guess so, because they're supplying it in... Uh, this. So uh, if you need an ashtray, there it is. And then you also do have uh, this small little uh, storage compartment here for the glove box. And then 
you have this center console, which, you know, finally they're actually releasing a new phone's connector, so that's pretty exciting to see the iPhone 6 and, and you know, anything plus that uh, that you can connect up with rather than the old connection, and you've got a little storage compartment in there as well. You also do have USB connectivity. So moving on to visibility, and all the windows are fairly narrow in here, but, you know, visibility overall isn't too bad. Checking out the rear, you know, it is a little bit cramped, especially that rear paneling right there, so if you do have an area where, you know, you need to see out that side, then you are a little bit limited on that. And checking your blind spot, actually pretty good. You can see pretty well with your blind spot. And you also do have a blind spot monitoring system as well as a reverse camera uh, to use for, you know, backing up and things like that. This also does include a Harman Kardon audio system, and it actually sounds really well, so I do really like the audio system in this vehicle. So let's go ahead and check out the rear. So sitting in the rear seat, I have the front seat adjusted to where I will be driving. I'm about 6'1", and as you can see, I actually still do have legroom and footroom down here, so pretty nice uh, as far as the passenger compartment for the rear passengers. Actually a decent amount of space in here. You also have AC vents, you've got your window control, and red seat belts. You also can fold down this center compartment, and you've got cup holders which fold out, as well as the armrest, and then you do have access to the back uh, through that, so if you wanted to put some skis or something through there, you could do that. Okay, let's go for a test drive. Put it in drive. You can already hear that exhaust crackling, and all we did was start it up. Pretty magnificent exhaust back there, so I'm going to go ahead and turn eco off, put it in sport traction mode, and then put it in sport driving handling mode. And so let's just work through the different systems. <laughs> Already you can hear that exhaust crackling. It's pretty incredible. Uh, not too much turbo lag, which is pretty impressive when you put your foot down on the throttle pedal. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the distance that the air travels between the turbocharger and the intake is very short because of that air to water intercooler. They also have a twin scroll turbocharger, so that helps as well. So you're getting peak boost very early on, 2,250 RPM. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, and it's just, you put your foot down and what a joy to drive this thing. It is seriously quick. And so on the opposite end, these brakes, huge brakes, ventilated, slotted, uh, just incredible brakes and they work really well. Pretty incredible stopping power in this vehicle and a good brake feel to it. You know, it's, it's pretty aggressive, uh, not a whole lot of travel in the brake pedal, but it does feel really good and has a nice progressive rate as you press down on it as far as how much it brakes. Um, and you don't, you know, you don't end up finding yourself in the ABS where you have all that chatter. Uh, it's really good stopping with these tires regardless. So, you know, it's just a great system as far as the braking is concerned. So let's talk about this transmission and I'm gonna go ahead and put it over into manual mode. Probably one of the best transmissions I've tested. Your foot's on the brake, you press the downshift button and it's instantly in gear. And I mean instantly. It's a very quick shifting dual clutch transmission, uh, as they should be. So, you know, you're hard on the throttle, quick upshift, you're down on the brakes, quick downshift, very, very quick, smooth. Uh, you know, you don't really notice it being harsh or anything like that. It's just a really smooth experience. And I really like the way it downshifts. So when you're hard on the brakes, you know, you're up in the next lower gear and then you can get right back on the throttle and just hammer it out. The other cool thing about this sport mode is, so I'm gonna get down in second gear for this tight corner, and as I pull out of the corner, I'm gonna to start to put my foot down, and you don't notice any understeer or oversteer, it just simply continues to hold, uh, very neutral steering, and I think that's part of that sport handling package, um, and so, just holds the road really well. Pretty impressive. Not much body roll at all, really beefy anti-roll bars, so you can really hammer through these corners. Ooh, there we've got some oversteer. <laughs> Pretty fun. And that exhaust, I mean, it just crackles on nearly every shift. It's unbelievable.
for okay now this car as as tested is around sixty seven thousand dollars but the fact that you can get this engine and this transmission for forty eight thousand dollars is pretty awesome and this car you know it could weigh more it weighs a little over thirty four hundred pounds and considering that mercedes calls it an suv you know they could certainly get away with a lot more weight in it and they don't you know they keep the weight down low 3450 pounds which you know it's not super light but it's actually pretty good all things considered especially for how much power this has uh, the amount of traction it has it's just an absolute blast to drive now as far as the steering when i first started driving it i thought you know it could have gone with a slightly tighter ratio and i still think maybe that's the case but overall the steering does feel really good and it is pretty predictable and it does give you plenty of feedback so overall i don't really have complaints with the steering uh, aside from maybe it could go with a slightly smaller ratio to make it a little bit more aggressive in the corners Okay, I've completed my fuel economy test course. This is approximately 53 miles, primarily highway with some city and hills mixed in. This car is rated 23 in the city, 29 on the highway. And as you can see, it achieved 31.3 miles per gallon on my test score. So over 30 miles per gallon and 355 horsepower, it's pretty hard to complain with that. Okay, so we're gonna get a highway pull in here using what uh, Mercedes calls race start. So it's essentially launch control. You put it in the manual mode, you put it in sport mode. Uh, and you basically pull both paddle shifts at the same time and then you can put your foot on the brake and the gas, build up the revs and launch. So hopefully we can get a good one in here and test out the zero to 60 times. So I'll come to a stop, an abrupt stop, and then to engage. Oh man, that is quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a fun thing. This thing has some serious power. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put it back in to C mode. So I've got cruise control set at 65, and you know, you do notice actually a decent amount of tire noise. So it's not the quietest interior uh, for it being a Mercedes. Uh, you're looking at about 78 decibels, which is better than uh, my Subaru STI, but it's worse than a lot of the other luxury vehicles I've tested. So pretty noisy, uh, and it's pretty much just the tires. You don't really hear much wind noise. Uh, it's really just those tires, and it may just be that they're, you know, summer performance tires, and that noise is just coming in. But this car isn't that heavy, so I do have to give it credit uh, for keeping the weight down. You know, they probably could take out a little bit of noise, but sacrifice some weight. So I admire that. It's a fairly lightweight car for what it is. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. It isn't typical to just stop on roads, but this is Oregon, so that happens. Can't blame them. It is a good view.